All right, welcome back to the respiratory chain in biochemistry. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Make sure to like this video and subscribe for future videos and notifications. All right, so in this video and the next one, we're going to talk about a problem that is overcome by two proteins, two membrane proteins. We know that ATP synthase, if we expect to make ATP, number one, we have to have ADP and phosphate, right? I mean, I think that's kind of obvious. I mean, those are the substrates for ATP synthesis, okay, by ATP synthase. So remember, this: the, if we go back to look at ATP synthase structure, if you remember the part that actually makes ATP, the beta and alpha subunits, those are right here. Those are in the mitochondrial matrix. They sort of jet into that, and they're not actually part of the membrane, okay? The question is, how do I get ADP and phosphate in there? The second problem also is that I have ATP in there once the ATP is made. The matrix is not the only place that uses ATP. There are some enzymes, a few in the intermembrane space, and then there's a lot of stuff in the cytosol, right? We know glycolysis has to burn some ATP. And there's, I mean, countless other enzymes that are going to do this. Kinases, all sorts of stuff. How do I get this ATP out of the matrix? Because if, it would be a problem if I made it and then couldn't get it out of the matrix. That would be useless, okay? So we're going to look at two enzymes, one in this video and one of the in the next, that are going to explain how we overcome this problem. The first one we're going to look at in this video is the adenine nucleotide translocase. It's this protein up here labeled as number one. So here I have the ATP that was previously made by ATP synthase. And I have to get it out of the matrix because certainly there are other enzymes, particularly in the cytosol, there's a lot of them, that use ATP. So I've got to get it out of the matrix. Also, this ADP, I need to get that into the matrix so it can react with ATP synthase. And we'll look at in the next video in terms of how phosphate gets in. But probably down there you can more or less guess how it does that. Okay. So it turns out that this enzyme, adenine nucleotide translocase, okay, this enzyme is going to move ADP into the matrix, and it's also going to move ATP out of the matrix into the inner membrane space. Your qu next question might be, well, remember the, the mitochondria has two membranes. If I move that ATP out into the inner membrane space, it's still not in the cytosol. How would it get into the cytosol? Well, it turns out that if we imagine another membrane, the outer membrane of the mitochondria right here, there are similar transporters that do the exact same thing. So it would facilitate the movement of ATP out into the cytosol and subsequent movement of ADP into the inner membrane space. And then you have the, an identical protein here that does the same thing. It moves ATP it, from the matrix into the inner membrane space and ADP from the inner membrane space into the matrix. So this whole reaction is basically about providing one of the substrates for ATP synthesis. Now, just a couple of things about the adenine nucleotide translocase. Number one, it's an example of antiportation. What is antiportation? Antiport is a process when you transport two things across the membrane, but they go in opposite directions. Okay? Meaning they're going anti-parallel to each other. And certainly ATP is going one direction and ADP is going the other. Okay? This is an example of antiport. When we're going to look at the phosphate transporter in the next video, that's an example of synport. Another thing also is we briefly went into some uncoupling reactions. Uncoupling reactions in the, from the mitochondrial's perspective are, are proteins or enzymes that move hydrogen ions or protons in the same direction as ATP synthase, but they don't couple it to ATP synthesis. Okay? This protein, the adenine nucleotide translocase, is not an example of an uncoupling protein because it doesn't move protons. The reason it doesn't need to move protons is because, in fact, the ATP movement into the inner membrane space and the ADP movement into the matrix are actually both spontaneous. There's no energy required, meaning even without the input of protons, those movements are both spontaneous. It, does, it doesn't require that. Okay? In fact, this protein really just operates um, in order to drive the uh, concentrations towards equilibrium. Okay? It doesn't require any excess energy in the form of secondary active transport. As when we look at the phosphate, transporter in the next video, the proton is, is going to move across, and that's an example of secondary active transport. 
Okay, so hopefully this protein, understanding the adenine nucleotide translocase, gives you an idea how ATP gets out of the matrix once we make it, and ADP gets into the matrix once we need it to make ATP. Okay, and it's a process that just continually goes both in the inner membrane, which is shown right here, and the outer membrane, which you have to imagine is over here somewhere, and it, and it basically facilitates the movement from the cytosol to the inner membrane space to the matrix if you're ADP, or the movement from the matrix to the inner membrane space to the cytosol if you're ATP. Okay, so hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. Join us in the next video where we talk about a similar concept for the phosphate translocase.